On this episode of Golf Treasures, we're headed to the Garden State to meet with Scott Pioli. He's a no-nonsense Jersey guy, a flea market junkie and professional collector with a ton of old golf memorabilia. Then we're headed to Long Island to visit David Levine. He's got some amazing golf advertising and pop culture pieces. We're talking coin-operated slot machines, posters, statues, and games dating back to early 1900s. But he's also got a reputation of being fiercely protective of his collection, so this could be tricky. Golf is one of the world's oldest games. It goes back centuries. And that's where we come in. I'm Ryan Carey. And I'm Bob Zafian. We're, We're Green, Green Jacket, Jacket Auctions. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Original Silver King. This is the stuff we came for. I noticed the Arnold Palmer swing cologne. Whoa. <laughs> we hunt down the most iconic pieces of golf history and then auction them off for prices most people wouldn't believe. That's got to be a $30,000 photo. What will it take for me to get this? Last auction sold for $60,000. Sold for $2 million. Holy smoke. From 18th century golf balls to clubs used by Bobby Jones. Whoa, this is what I'm talking about. And even one of the most sought after collectibles in the game. Kind of sends chills up your spine. We have some of the most demanding clients in the world. And we're constantly under the gun because there's always another auction right around the corner. I'd really like to walk out with those. I think we can make a ton of money. We're unraveling history and trying to make a few bucks as well. That's a good deal. I've never seen anything like that. This, this is Golf, golf Treasures. Looking at this soup here, French onion soup. It's 7 a.m. I know. Order some eggs. I don't want any eggs. Ah, oh, the lumberjack. Sounds like me. What do you got? You got pancakes, waffles. No. Sausage, no. eggs, no. bacon, no. ham. No. All of that? It's a lumberjack. Can we just focus on what's coming up? What we got? Scott Pioli? Scott's a good guy. I've spoken to him on the phone a bunch of times, never got anything from him. And uh, now we'll put the pressure on him because we'll be there, so. This would be huge for us because we can really reinvent ourselves here because we've never really done advertising stuff. There's barely any of it out there. Yeah, a lot of his collection is, you know, 75, 80 years old, made of like paper and tin, and that just, it doesn't survive. Hey guys. Hey. Hey, are hey. we all ready to order? Yes. I think yes. so. Right. I'll start. Um, I want two egg whites uh, scrambled. I'm gonna get the Hungry Man. The Hungry Man. And I have a, a question. Your onion ring tower, how, how big is that? Is it... It's a pretty good size. All right, I get one of those as well. All right. I'll be right back, guys. All right, take care. What? I'm hungry. We got a lot of negotiation to do. I, you know, I need my energy. I collect golf antiques, and I collect golf advertising and advertising signs. I'm pretty savvy in my negotiating, and the items I have, I know what they're worth. Scott, how you doing, boys? Scott, how you doing? How you been, Bob? Good. Ryan? Scott's a professional. He actually makes his living buying and selling golf memorabilia. So getting him to go the auction route might be real difficult. Man, I've, I've never seen so many antique signs in one place. This garage is amazing. He's got advertising signs. He's got vintage golf course signs. This is something that you can tell he's been working on for a really long time. What do you think of this? <laughs> hey, Bob. We found you. Oh, yeah. You got pants funny like guy. that, Bob? Uh -oh. Funny guy. You need to have this for your desk. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> Guy doesn't appreciate good humor. I don't know if you guys noticed this. Whoa, from, Oak from Oakmont Mont Country Club. Cool, Oakmont. Yep. Jack Nicholas, Ben Hogan, Ernie Els. Some of the greatest matches of all time played right on that course in Pennsylvania. They've hosted the PGA Championship three times, eight US Opens. We know it's from a big golf tournament. The crazy thing about that is any golf collector who would be going after this is gonna compete with people who collect Pepsi stuff. And they may pay more money for it because of the Pepsi Cola. Sure, do you mind if I pick it up? No, not at all, take a look. Oh, nice. This is probably a sign from about the 1950s, maybe 60s. That's really cool. We have to get this piece. Are you interested? Oh, I definitely, this, we definitely want this piece. What do you think something like this is worth? I would think something like this should be worth 500 or more. Okay. We should easily be able to get $800 in our auction and maybe more, absolutely. I think this is something that I would consider for your auction. Consider or deal? Deal. All right, All right, nice. That's a great piece. Finally, we've got something for the auction. The first deal is always the hardest. 
Holy sh! Ryan, check this out. Die cut, Johnny Walker, tin litho. Ah, I love that piece. We sold one of these like about six months ago. Really? This is in remarkable condition. The cool thing about it is it's got all the dates, it's got all the months, so the bartender would just change the date on it and he'd be able to keep it up there. That's why the manufacturers gave him this, because they'd be able to put it out all year. It's not something that ever expired. So yeah, and to have something like this survive with no rust, no creases, I mean, this is, this is a rare piece. This Johnny Walker advertising piece is over 100 years old. It's almost in perfect condition. This used to sit on some bar somewhere in Scotland, and this thing is just amazing, would sell for big money at auction. I would expect to get at least $1,200, maybe $1,500 for this. I, I really think that's kind of low. Uh, I really do. Uh, this piece is easily worth $2,000 to $3,000. But it was sitting on your shelf. I think I'd put it out here just to clean it up and bring back to the office. I love looking at these antiques. Help me out here. Oh, great. Now they're double teaming me. No, 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 no. I know this guy can talk a lot. I'm here, kind of just talk to you. Advertising's hot. As you said, where am I going to find another one? The good thing about that, where are our bidders going to find another one? They're not. That's what creates a bidding war. That's what's perfect for an auction. This is a mortgage payment. You know what? I think you could keep talking, but you're not going to get that piece from me. We're just too far apart. Time for plan B. We need to at least get something for our auction. Right off the bat, I like the Baycaster, and I like the Swing Cologne. How about three items, put them up for auction. I got to get 2,500. Earlier, we made a great deal with Scott on this really neat Oakmont sign. Yeah, but now we're at a standstill with this 100-year-old Johnny Walker calendar. I know you like it. Just, just one last attempt to see if you're I right. just don't think that I want to sell it right now. I think this piece is so pretty that I want to keep looking at it. Going into this, we thought Scott was a professional. It turns out he's a sentimentalist as well. Yeah, he's really attached to these items. Well, is, is there anything else we could take a look at while we're here? I have a few more things in there that I think you might like. All right. Take a look. And welcome to my office, boys. Wow. I love it. Everything in its place. Now, this is an office. That is neat. You're a little too young for some of this stuff. This is all cool. I think you're <laughs> too young for most of this stuff, too. This is a real rarity. Arnold Palmer Cologne. Beautiful picture of Arnold Palmer. Nothing's cooler than Arnold Palmer. Arnie is the king. He basically invented the golf advertising market. To have vintage pieces from him doesn't get any better than that. And still has the bottle. What? Yeah. It's got actually swing in it. Oh, there it is. You, need you, mind if, you mind if I? Just a little bit. The ladies will go nuts if I use too much, right? Arnie was pretty good with the women. As is Bob. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> wow. Still good? Smelling. It must have been Arnie. It must have been something else with Arnie, because I don't think this did it. <laughs> How cool is that? Now, you tell me that something like this wouldn't have been thrown right out. Oh, of course. Isn't that something? I want that. That is neat. How about an Arnold Palmer fishing reel All and right. the instructions? How about that? So when was that piece made? Probably in the 1950s. Well, that was, you know, really amazing, because when Arnold Palmer, he was like the first spokesman for anything. Arnold Palmer opened the door for all the pros today mm -hmm. to get into advertising. That is so it's cool. It's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. So, you know, we could go through all of those items up there. Uh, how about we give you an offer right now for that entire shelf? Well, you know, I'm the type of guy that always listens to offers. So I turn to Ryan and I say, you know what, we should make a play on this whole thing. So we throw out a number. You take $5,000? No. Are you serious? That's a very low You didn't offer. even think about it. Very, what, what, that's a I very mean, low What offer. do you think this stuff is worth? Well, a piece like this should be worth at least 1000 bucks itself. If it was in better shape, yes, I, I can understand Well, if it was in better shape, but find another one that's uh, in know, better shape. All you guys find another one, find another one. I found one. Now I want the price. Everything all together. I'd probably let it go for 20 grand. $20,000? Are you nuts? That was not what serious? I was expecting. 20 grand. Where do you, where do you come up wow. with that? 
The items on the top shelf are throwaway items that were meant to be used and just thrown out. To have them today where some items are mint in the original box, it's just rare. I have an idea. Let's meet in the middle somewhere. We get to pick out five items, just five, from that same shelf that we get to put up for auction. Just five. Can't hurt. Right off the bat, I like the Baycaster and I like the Swing Cologne. They're the two that I want. Arnie Ryan, Palmer sells. Arnie sells. Arnie sells. So, Ryan, you pick out two or three items, oh. and let's see if we could close something. I definitely want a vintage coffee tin. I'll take the one on the bottom, the big one, the birch beer. Got to have the birch beer. That thing's cool. Uh, and, you know, I got to do it. That biscuit container. How about you like the biscuit tin? Love the biscuit tin. I like that. Want that? There you go. That's what I'm talking about. The Arnold Palmer fishing reel. Mm -hmm. Got to have that. In the box. And, and? And you like the bottle. So three items. Three items. Up for auction. I got to get 2,500 for these things. What do you think? I think we have to. You know what? 2,500. Deal. All right. Great. Right. You right. better get 2,500. I think we'll do better. That's even better. I think today was very successful. Whenever we can start building relationships, walk away with some items, that's success. Now that was an awesome collection. Told you Jersey wouldn't disappoint. I've never seen half this stuff before. What you do is you shoot it up there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It made complete sense why we hadn't seen it before. I think this guy's got them all. He's got them all. Here we are in uh, Long Island. We're going to see uh, David Levine's collection. So what's he got in his collection? A lot of coin-operated machines, um, vending machines, gambling machines. Oh, golf all related? All golf related. Oh, nice. There's a lot of collectors out there that know him, know of his collection, and really want a piece from that collection. Let's go. David. Hi. David, how you doing? Good. Hi, Bob. It's good to see you again. Come on in. Now that's what we're talking about. Oh, wow, that's cool. Oh, yes, aren't they? Yeah, you don't see this stuff ever. David's kind of this eccentric guy who will go to an antique store and he'll see something that'll catch his eye, and it becomes this all-consuming passion of his to create a collection around this one piece. So all of a sudden, this one little piece now becomes this big, huge collection. Collecting is fun. It's putting together pieces in a collection, finding things you've never seen before. So this is early 1900s. I guess it is. All it's, wood. It's got the same kind of art deco as the posters from the same period. It's funky, you know, you know I, I like really cool. funky. I love, you know, I love the, uh, the socks and everything oh, else. Oh, yeah. All handmade. You can see just by the way he talked about his things that, you know, he took a lot of pride in it. He's got some great stuff. What would the price be, the correct price for that piece? If you want to take a whole collection. So as a collection, you mean if, if the other figurines could all go together, yes. that, you'd have more interest? It's something you really don't want to break up because you want it to go into one home. You Are know, you married to this piece? Am I married to yeah. it? I won't break up a collection. David may not be ready to part with these vintage golf figures, but hopefully there's a lot more to see. But, you know, if you like these, I'd love to show you more of my collection. Let's do it. Let's say it. That's what we're here unusual. to say. All right, let's go. Whoa. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, I like it. I just want to play, though. I love all the old arcade games, all the vintage stuff. You know, I was looking for my mother to, to ask her for a handful of quarters, because this is what I love. I've never seen half the stuff before. No, wow. there's not too many people have. Some are rare and others are impossible to find. Oh, cool, check this out. You ever see one of these? No. You kind of play it like pool. It's called Karoom Golf. What you do is you see the holes there, they got all point values, falls down a hole, and you keep score here. So if two people play against each other. What do you, where's, how do you, the plunger? Well, it's not a plunger. You actually, you use a, uh, uh, either like a pool cue or in this case, a golf shaft. And what you do is you, Shoot it up there, and it's kind of like a pachinko machine, and you want, you really can't control once it goes down. In this case, I just got 50 points, and you see, it's gonna come right down to that 
right down on the ah, slot. For right five out. cents. This thing's old. I know. This is really cool. Blue. 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 White. There it is. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's just like a hundred year old gum. It's horrible. I think it's a jawbreaker. <laughs> Can't believe you just ate that. This gumball machine is from the 1940s. The gum in it was from the 1940s as well. Bob puts the gum in his mouth and actually eats it. Mm mm, good. Whoa. This is nice. This is like perfect condition. This sat at a bar. So how old is this piece? Uh, most of these machines are from the 1930s. 1930s. Now, yeah. I notice you, you have two of these, don't you? I have two of them. Oh. So would you would you consider maybe, you know, putting one of these up for auction? Uh, I Because you're not splitting up the collection, then. You still have your one for yeah, the collection. Yeah, well, that's it. What do you feel this is worth? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Original Silver King. Wow. Would you allow us to see if we can make a deal? What do you feel this is worth? Well, I, I've sold this for like $4,000. Would you consider maybe, you know, putting one of these up for auction? This guy is a tough negotiator, and he doesn't want to get rid of anything. You don't see too many in this no. condition around. It almost looks like it was made yesterday. Yes. We've never sold one of these before, and I know we've got customers for this kind of stuff. Uh, is this something you might consider parting with? I'll be happy to put it into okay. your auction. Great, so absolutely happy to have it. <laughs> I tell you what, it is a treasure. There's no question at all, and uh, we'll do very well with this piece. Yes. Oh, yeah. You'll be happy. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thanks, David. Usually in our negotiations, there's a lot of haggling going on. But in the case with David, there was none of that. He kind of made it easy on us. Yeah, honestly, we're just happy to get some stuff. David's got a great collection. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Original Silver King. Wow. I couldn't believe this guy had a Silver King. There's only 15 of them or less in the world. We just sold one for a world record price, and he's got one sitting right in his, in his, on his shelf somewhere. This is unreal. You know, the, the thing that's neat about this and gives it the value is the fact that it's made of paper mache. I mean, you walk out to your car in a rainstorm, and that thing is done. I mean, the paint's worn off. The, the paper mache is just going to melt. And advertising pieces just didn't last when Silver King was done with their promotion with their, those particular golf balls, they got tossed out. So for that stuff to survive, and especially that condition is just phenomenal, just very, very rare. I mean, it's probably one of the top two or three examples that are out there. So we sold it at, at auction for $60,000. That means there's a guy out there, our underbidder, who tried to pay $55,000 for it and was unsuccessful. Would you allow us to approach that underbidder with this piece and see if we can make a deal? I would consider it positively. Honestly, it was tough to pin him down on anything. We were getting, you know, I'll consider it. Uh, I'll consider considering it. I will positively consider it, which I've never heard of before. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this back, but uh, then let's keep looking at some other items. That's great. Go right. ahead. I tell you what, I, I felt like a dentist because this was like pulling teeth. So what are these? I've never even seen these before. Well, these are golf ball slot machines. So are these like gambling devices or what are they? Well, they're gambling for a ball. Either, you know, you win, you can win one ball, you can win 40 balls. So I know back in the 30s, you know, when, when gambling got out of hand and, and drinking and things like that, they opened up speakeasies and the revenues would come in and they'd bust these machines up, throw them in the river, throw them in Lake Michigan. And that's why these things don't exist. Right, very few have survived. Can I try one of them? Go ahead. Here's a quarter. OK, OK. I get half the balls. I put it up here. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm not going to break it, right? No, not at all. You're probably not going to win either. Oh, oh, oh. That's got to be good. Look, hey, well, the ball came out. Right, let's see what you had. I got Two a couple cherries. Of Two cherries. cherries, you got a ball. What's something like this worth? Well, in today's market, I would assume thirty to $50,000. I kind of 
would be interesting to get one of these. I know you have a few, and that's kind of one of the things that will let you separate uh, an item from your collection. The value on these, you put a value of? I put a value about 12 to 15 okay. in this condition. So, David, what would it take to put one of these in our auction? I would put a reserve of 12,000. I definitely wasn't getting the sense that this was going to be easy. Bob? That's a great piece. I think we do it. We'll do it. OK. Thanks, David. David, thanks a lot. Right, great. This is going to make our auction. Yeah, this is great. I've never seen anything like this. We haven't seen any of these games before, let alone an entire room chock full of them. Yeah, I mean, we've seen some of the greatest collections in the world. And if you see one of these pieces in a collection, you know, that's a treat. Seeing this, it was just, it was overload is what it was. Thank you so much, man. Good. Appreciate it. Good seeing David, you David, nice seeing you yeah, again. We'll be in have touch. Safe, All right. Take care. Right. It was good to finally get a deal with this guy. And if we can make money for him, we can get some other items. This has been an awesome week. We got some great items from Scott's collection, including an Oakmont sign, some advertising pieces, even some great cologne from the king himself, Arnold Palmer. And at David's, we got a 1930s play golf game and a vintage golf ball slot machine. Now that's an awesome week.